two step procedure first step is solve the characteristic polynomial to find lambda i now this can be done only in, in closed form only for the two cross two case for larger dimensional cases uh, you'll have to uh, solve it by hand for specific a matrices or you'll have to use a, a solver a zero finding algorithm to find all the zeros of that polynomial equation and to find eigenvectors by finding the null space of a minus lambda i. Of course, this is okay for small dimensional systems, but uh, if you have a very large dimensional system, then the errors can uh, accumulate. So this is not the most uh, uh, desirable way to compute eigenvalues and eigenvectors for very large dimensional systems. Uh, we'll see that uh, much later, uh, some numerical techniques to, to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now, um, some couple of properties of these uh, eigenvectors, uh, but maybe before that, I just want to mention about multiplicity. So in this context, we, we consider multiplicity to be simply the number of times it occurs as a zero of this polynomial. Um, but uh, a more thorough um, way of looking at multiplicity is in terms of um, the the derivatives of a polynomial and uh, and whether uh, this particular eigenvalue is a zero of the derivative of the characteristic polynomial. So specifically, um, a polynomial p of t um, has lambda uh, as a zero of multiplicity k um, which is always greater than or equal to 1 uh, if and only if we can write P of t equal to in this form P of t to be in the form uh, t minus lambda power k times q of t where q of q of t is a polynomial such that of lambda is not equal to zero. So basically, if I take, for example, um, p dash of t, dp of t by dt, this will be equal to k times t minus k power t minus lambda. power k minus 1 times q of t. Um, <clears throat> plus t minus lambda power k times q dash of t. Right? And uh, so from this representation, you can see clearly that uh, p dash of lambda will be equal to 0 if and only if k is strictly more than 1. For if k equals 1, then k minus 1 becomes 0. And uh, this term becomes k times q of lambda. And of course, this term will go to 0, but that doesn't matter. q of lambda is not equal to 0. And k is, uh, k is 1. So the derivative will, not, will be non-zero if k equals one. For, so basically for p of p dash of lambda to be equal to zero, we need that in this representation, k should be greater than one. And similarly, if you take the second derivative, uh, 
Um, so if uh, if k greater than one, p double dash of t, second derivative will be k times k minus one times t minus lambda power k minus two q of t plus some other terms, which will all have something like um, t minus lambda power m for m uh, greater than or equal to k minus one. Okay, these type of terms. And now once again, if, um, so basically once again, you can see that P double dash of lambda will be equal to zero if and only if k is greater than two. Because if k equals two, then this term becomes uh, t minus lambda power zero. And then if you substitute uh, uh, t equals lambda, this will remain equal to one and k into k minus one is going to be non-zero and Q of lambda is non-zero. So this whole thing will be non-zero, even though these terms are going to zero. And so uh, P double dash of lambda will be zero if and only if K is greater than two and so on. So basically this uh, calculation shows that P of T, rather, so lambda is uh, zero of p of t with multiplicity k if and only if p of lambda equals p dash of lambda equals etc up to p k minus one derivative of lambda equals zero and p k of lambda is not equal to zero. So this is how uh, you get a more precise definition of the multiplicity of eigenvalues. Okay, um, so just a couple of properties of eigenvectors. Um, the first property is that if lambda 1 through lambda n are distinct, that is no two of them are identical, then there exists um, a linearly independent set. of eigenvectors. Okay, so this is um, saying a little more than, so if I have lambda one to lambda n being distinct eigenvalues, corresponding to each eigenvalue, I will have one uh, eigenvector that comes from the definition itself, one non-zero eigenvector. But what we are saying here is that these eigenvectors are going to be linearly independent, which means that these eigenvalue, uh, eigenvectors will have unique directions and since they are sitting in the n-dimensional space, they will actually span R to the n. Um, the second property is that uh, if there are R repeated eigenvalues, then uh, A will have N linearly independent. I'm going to use more short forms. Linearly independent eigenvectors provided rank of a minus lambda i 
equals n minus r. Okay, and this should hold for every distinct eigenvalue. Okay, so this is sort of answering the questions of question we asked at the beginning of the class. That is, when will the matrix A have n linearly independent eigenvectors? One case is when all the eigenvalues are distinct. Another case is when if there are repeated eigenvalues, but for each eigenvalue, if you comp compute the rank of A minus lambda i, and that is equal to n minus r, where uh, r is the number of times this eigenvalue is uh, repeated, then um, then, then also it will have n linearly independent uh, eigenvectors. However, the directions of the R eigenvectors associated with these repeated eigenvalues are not unique. There are multiple ways in which you can find a basis for that R dimensional space and therefore um, multiple ways in which you can find a set of n linearly independent eigenvectors. Um, and the third point is that if V1 V2 up to Vr are eigenvectors associated with R repeated eigenvalues. Which are all equal, they're repeated, so we call them lambda. Then any V belonging to span of V1 through Vr is also an eigenvector of uh, okay, eigenvector associated with the same eigenvalue. Okay, so um, for example, if I consider the matrix um, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, then any V in span of E2, E3, okay, E2 is 0, 1, 0, and E3 is 0, 0, 1, is an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals zero. Okay, and uh, the identity matrix has uh, uh, n repeated eigenvalues, all equal to one, and so any v in R to the n is actually an eigenvector. Okay, so I'm out of time, so we'll stop here and continue again on Friday.